没有，没有。Do you like my boots? Aren't they absolutely beautiful? I will tell you about them. They have been sent to me by a beautiful woman called Catherine Liddy, who makes shoes. Um, she's Irish, but she gets them made in Italy, and she sent them to me. And I just, I adore them. Like the leather is so soft, and I love the colour. And she has a shop on Etsy, and she said in her letter that it's shoes by Catherine Liddy. But I went looking for it, and I, they seem to me to be Kate L. So if you wanted to, to get a pair, she has other different colours and other lovely things, and, um, and. They're just beautiful. So how are you? How was your Easter? Did you have a lovely one? Did you eat rings around yourself? I did. Um, I had a very nice time with the Keezers in Kerry. And uh, just, you know, to get kind of hot and cold running access to Hannah is just fantastic. But they were all great. There was an Easter bunny for the Easter egg hunt. And um, Teddy uh, summoned over Emma. And he goes to her, kind of, meow. Meow. He goes, um, that's a man in a suit. He's only four. Isn't that terrible that he knows men in suits already and that he didn't actually think it was the real Easter Bunny? Um, so I'm not having a great day today, entre nous. I am very sad today. I'm very thin-skinned today. This is going to sound ridiculous, but I'll tell you anyway. Somebody who I thought was my friend blocked me on Twitter. And I am, I am disproportionately upset because... I don't know what I've done wrong. And like, I've never even met this person in real life. But you know, when you're kind of at a low ebb anyway, uh, these things hurt you more. Um, and uh, sure, I'm pathetic, like I am, you know. Um, so I had an interesting week. I have been rehearsing for my Radio 4 recordings. And uh, God, you know, I, like, you know I can talk, like, um, it's no bother to me, but when you're reading stuff out, it's very different because you have to sort of perform it. So you have to be funny or not funny or do suspense or, you know, hold off on things. And um, so I had um, I'd have a real sense of kinship with, with Beyonce, like when she was spending the eight months rehearsing for the homecoming um, thing in Coachella. I mean, you know, rehearsing. What's that she said now? Nobody likes rehearsing because rehearsing makes you humble. And I thought, Beyonce, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. I'm only messing. Uh, and I didn't have to cut out the carbs and the bread. And I went through the things that she cut out. There was nothing left to eat. Like she cut out everything. Meat and carbs and bread and alcohol and sugar and chocolate. And, and there were other things fish like it left nothing so fair play to her uh, she's um very very hard worker and obviously very strong-willed um now i'm going to tell you about books now i actually don't have a copy of the first one because old woman stole it on me it's by Sinead moriarty and it's called seven letters and it is so good it's it's an ethical conundrum sort of book you know like Jodie Pico writes those sort of things um, where it's just one of those kind of intractable insolvable problems in modern life and you know she brings different points of view well this is about an intractable ethical question and um, but Sinead is a warmer writer than Jodie Pico. No, no shade on, on Jodie Pico. It's just that there are different kinds of writers, even though the, the format, not the format, the theme might be the same or similar, you know. Um, so Sinead has created these very warm, likeable, identifiable with characters on different sides of this ethical question. And it's just such a very interesting read. Like I, you know, I devoured it. And, um, and then you see, I wanted to hold it up here today and say how great it is. But old woman rang and demanded that I bring her a book. Um, and I said, well, I've read one, ma'am, but um, I need it for my short film tomorrow. And she said, but I've nothing to read. And I said, but I need it to show the people. And she goes, are you going to leave me here with nothing to read? And, and so then I had to give it to her. So can we pretend that I have it? Sinead Moriarty, seven letters out on the 11th of May.
thanking you. Now I have another book to show you and I actually do have it. Because I suspect old woman would not like this. Now this is by an American writer called Marcy Dermansky. I have never I have never heard of her before. Um, it's called Very Nice and it is gas and fascinating and okay on the back it says perfect for fans of Sally Rooney, Jennifer Egan and A.M. Holmes. I would say the one that she's most like is Jennifer Egan um, in the Goon Squad book not in the Manhattan Beach book and um, it's it's funny and the people in it are sort of a bit sociopathic some of them anyway um, and it was just very enjoyable like and I mean, it's a literary novel, which means that it won't be piled high in um, the airports when you're going on your summer holidays. But it's, but it is very readable and accessible and fun and fascinating. So there you are. So I've ordered another one from her. And then somebody gave her a quote, a quote, a quote. Emma Straub was her name. So now I'm after ordering one of Emma Straub's as well, because I went and read it. I thought, who is she? Who are all these people? How do I not know about them? I am mortified for not knowing. So they're, they're sort of cool American girls. Anyway, um, so what else have I to tell you? Um, I introduced Hannah to Baby Shark and she is obsessed. And I did that because I want Hannah to associate me with happy things. Um, also, um, when we were in Kerry, she ate sorbet for the first time and it was hilarious because she couldn't get over, the, like, so it was cold, which was a bit weird, but it was sweet, which was yummy. And then she had the top bit of a baked Alaska some meringue and you have never seen anyone enjoy anything so much. She is just, she, she wears her heart on her sleeve, um, as you'd say. Um, she doesn't, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't have a poker face when it comes to enjoying things. So yes, I was babysitting her. Oh God, it was so nice. There was a bang on my door in the, on the, in the hotel. A big, loud, rowdy bang. And I went and I opened it. And there's Missy Hannah sitting cross-legged just outside the door in a little yellow onesie and a little blue dress. And her hair had just been washed. And it was all, you know, silky and fluffy. And, and she was like a little duckling. And so Tyg was hiding around the corner, but it was like somebody had delivered this beautiful thing to me. So she came in and so I was minding her. And so then I thought I would, you know, misuse this time um, so that I could um, bond with her by just, you know, all, all her triggers when it comes to me would be um, pleasurable ones. And Emma, my other beloved niece, said to me that um, Hannah was obsessed with me which is just such a lovely thing to say. And then I told old woman this, and old woman goes, more like you're obsessed with her. You know, she won't let me have Anthony. She's very main, old woman. She's very main. But look at, that's her job. Um, and what else? I'm going to Belfast on, on, on Friday to, um, for the gig that I had to cancel in January when I was so sick and I'm so sorry about it. But look at, the time went quick and we'll have the crack and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Myself and Roisin are going up on the train on the Friday. I love trains. I just love trains. Trains are great. And then I'm back for a couple of days and then I'm going to Stockholm. Yes, Stockholm. Um, for it's sort of a women's fiction thing and Jenny Colgan is coming from Scotland and then there's one writer coming from Finland and then the rest are Swedes and it's just oh yeah and we're staying in the rival hotel who was owned by by one of the lads from ABBA and I stayed there once before I don't know if I told you about this it was a good while ago and um, I was overdoing publicity and every person that interviewed me said you do know that it's owned by it might it would be Benny is there a Benny? There's a Benny and I'm going to have to ask myself, who's the other lad? You sure, how would you know? You know nothing about ABBA. He knows nothing about ABBA. Benny or the other lad from ABBA. And so I was told this about 4,000 times. Everybody kept telling us. And, and on the last day, I burst into the hotel room and I shouted at himself, do you know this hotel is owned by Benny from ABBA? And, um, and then I said, you think somebody would have told us? And then we had a good old laugh because it was funny to us, do you see, because everyone had told us all the time. 
Anyway, so look at you had to be there. Um, so yeah, it's going to be May, May. Look at what can you do? It's going to be bank holiday the next weekend, isn't it? Well, I hope you all have another one. Well, I hope you have a lovely time. And um, and uh, and I'll be on to you. I, uh, I've nothing else really to tell you. I watched the end of the OA and most of the time through this, this series, I was like, what? I don't know. But then the last three minutes, I just thought this is feckin' gas. So now I'm fully back on board again. Um, have a nice week.